Monaghan's Galway, located on the Tomb Road, is the leading dealership in Galway for new Skoda, Cupra and Seat models. Now is the perfect time to order your new car or visit monaghan's.ie. You're welcome along to the Maroon and White pod. It is county final weekend in the Senior Football Championship. Curvin and Mike Cullen play in a repeated last year's final this Sunday in Tomb Stadium at 2.15. The game live on TG Car. Curvin looking to do back-to-back and Mike Cullen uh, looking to win the county title. As well as the intermediate semi-finals, four teams remain in the hunt and the winners of both semi-finals will play in the intermediate county final. I'm joined this evening by Uchtaird manager Alan Murphy and Anna Down manager Norman O'Brien to look ahead to the game. Alan, coming to you first. Uchtaird, obviously, this year, um, similar to Norman, you it's an down team you got knocked out in a quarter final but overall how do you reflect on the year with Uchtred? Um, Really enjoyable Paul um, and I suppose uh, a really productive year as well um, back to back promotions in the last two years in terms of league football um, and blooded a few in the league which which was which was uh, needed I suppose um, and then I suppose it's my fourth year there, and we've had two quarter finals. So um, it's uh, I won't say we're 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 jumping out of our our, our skins and saying we're, we're but a semi final would be nice, obviously. But um, but no, we've 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 done well, and um, uh, and it, it, there's a good base, good a good culture there now. Yeah, I have to ask you the manager and goalkeeper role this year. How was it for you? Um. Look, it was probably a necessity if I'm honest with you. Um, and it was it was tough at times. Um I, as much as I kind of threw water on the fact that you're trying to manage from a goal and the positives of being on the pitch and, and all that, it's difficult. Like um difficult to I suppose the, the, the when you're when when decisions are being made on the sideline and they're they're trying to get them out to you and, and you're trying to get a decision to the sideline and that's so it's, it's difficult at times, but um but as I said, it was a necessity, and I think it worked um, because of uh, we've been struggling the last few years, keeper wise. Um, so it was just a stopgap. Um, I don't see it, don't see it being in the long term bigger at it. Um, but I think it. Uh, look, we got to the quarter final, and we we. I mean, it, it, it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. Do you still kind of look back at that my calling game, obviously, because you were really there until kind of the last five minutes where they just pull away in the end. Yeah, first half, if I'm honest, was the was the killer. Um, we should have gone in and I'm not been disrespectful to my Cullen or anything, but we should should have gone in a lot, a lot more than one point up. Um, I think we had seven wides in the in the, in the first half and poor shot selection, few in that. Um, we dominated the first half, I thought. So, I think if we had gone in three or four, um, we might have given them a problem. But the problem was, I suppose, Cook Cook was on fire and he gave them that oxygen when they needed it and. Um, yeah, the game was in the balance, and then a little bit like Tume uh, for us this year, we had to go for it at the end, and and we we got suckered with a goal, and then it kind of takes the what was that kind of a game like uh, in the end, you know? Norman, for yourselves, I was chatting to you when you topped the group. You went down and played Tume in the quarter final, and obviously knocked out in the, in that quarter final. But how do you reflect on the year with Anna down? Same as that in there, Paul. It was a very enjoyable year. Um, a lot learned and a really new team built and a very young team. Um, I think lads bought into it really well as it went on. It took a bit of work at the start to put its foundations in, but once the foundations were put in, it did build really well. And we would have been very disappointed not to get a result against June, but probably the four best teams in the county were in the semi finals and we weren't in that bracket um, just yet. Um, I still think there's loads of improvement left in the group. Um, it'll take a lot of effort to get into that top four, but that's probably the team, the twelve teams that didn't make that top four, or the the eleven teams and the team coming up. They'll be all looking to try to break into that, but those four teams won't let you in easily. Like you're, you're going to have to really. Hear it. Go by club football is at a really high standard now, and you can see that being in the two of the last three All Ireland Senior Football Finals as well. And whoever wins go with this year. They'll have a hell of a crack of winning the Connacht, and then they win the Connacht. They'll have a hell of a crack of winning the All Ireland club. So it's that's the standard you're at. It's it's ruthless, really. So yeah, you have to you have to keep learning very very quick as a player and as a coach to to survive in that environment because it is a really highly competitive environment. So it's a high performance environment to go with club football at the moment because all the clubs are really well coached and all the players are in really good condition. So 
it's it's a revolving wheel at the moment. Justin, on that quarterfinal, obviously, uh, in the build-up to the game, Norman, obviously, I suppose Damien picked up that injury in the last game. Was was that a difficult one to deal with going into the team game? Yeah, he felt he felt OK himself. Um, but look, at fully fit Damien Comer. Probably scores 1-3, one, 1-4 one, a game. A not-so-fit Damien Comer gets you 1-1. One, one. Like It's still a huge return, but it's those extra two or three points and the, the damage he can cause and the, the options it gives you to move him around to different positions. Um, it's just very unfortunate that he picked up that knock against Killanen because he was absolutely flying before that like and was a real focal point for us and we could we were moving him between the lines and he was he was really hard to pick up and he was enjoying his football. So it was, it was just very unfortunate. But it's only when you see him in the, in the flesh and, and you really go into the club games, you, you appreciate how good he really is. And then you see... The abuse he takes and the protection that those uh, county players, I'm sure Alan knows it there with Matthew as well. Like they, everything they get, there's two, three hanging out of them. And then you get that at inter-county level where the guys are even in better shape again. And they're, every guy has every rep done in the gym. It is it is a hard, hard slog on the body to keep that going all the time. Like, but uh, And you have to be in phenomenal shape to play inter-county football now. And it's when you see these guys going at the peak of it at club football you realise really how good they are and like it's almost the inter-county lads this year in Galway had huge years like for their clubs so, yeah, the, no more than the Curra Finns and the, the Mike Cullen team they're in the final all their, those five or six lads on each team are really driving it on in, in, in all those clubs and there's a lot of really good players outside those five and six in those clubs as well that are at that level to nearly go to the next stage so it's just it it's it's amazing when you're in around them to see the level they're at now. It's it's gone up and real ramp again from like myself and Alan would have been lucky enough to work with players like Donald Vaughan over the days and play with them, Alan play with them. But like I think intercounty football has gone up another notch again in the last couple of years to the to the levels of fitness and, and where, where lads are at like. If we're just to get into this final Carfin and Mike Cullen, Alan, do you think the best two teams are in the final? Um, hmm. best two teams are definitely in the final. Um, but I'd say the best two squads are definitely in the final as well. Um, like we've seen over the last, we've seen over the last number of games with both both teams. Um, the strength and depth that they've had, what they've brought on. Um, like you can talk about this player and that player being injured for Mike Cullen or for or for or Finn, but what they're bringing off the bench in the last 10, 15 minutes, like I mean, there it's just it's just a different level in in terms of what we had, what. Even what Tum had, um, what Salt Hill probably had. Like, I mean, if you look at the Tum and the Salt Hill substitutes in their game, I mean, Jamie Murphy came back on as a sub and Tomo came back on as a sub. Um, like, they, Mike Cullen are bringing on Aidan Claffey with five minutes to go, who has started every other game probably and 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 been a really, really effective player for them. Like, you know, um, and Hank Finn are bringing on Tony Gill, who has who played every game nearly as well. So I mean, that's that's the strengths, that's the that's the competition for places, and um, so the answer is yeah. But the best the best two teams, the best um, the best decision makers probably at the moment are in the in the final. If I'm honest, do you feel the two best teams are in the final as well, Norman? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. And the two most intelligent football teams are definitely in the final. Um, they're the best at playing the conditions. They're the best at playing the opposition. They're the best at the basic skill set. They're probably the fittest teams and they're probably the best conditioned teams. So that's the standard. And that's why they're in the last four finals or whatever they've been in. Or are they going for this is the kind of the fifth one where they've won two each? So like it's not this is not just this year that these two teams have been at the pinnacle of like really probably since 2020, in with Salt Hill there and Chum. When the, when they're um in around the, the, those four teams, they are the four like uh, but the, the two but the two best teams are definitely Mike Cullen and Corfin. Like the outside of them, everyone else is playing a bit of catch up, um and a lot of catch up in a lot of in a lot, a lot of clubs. But like the standards that Corfin have brought the game to is phenomenal, and Mike Cullen are the probably the one team that can really test their metal the next day and see how far they can push them to to break a point. Um. But to answer your question, Paul, definitely, yeah, the two best teams are in the final. Alan did, for, I suppose, we we'll, we'll look at Sawtell's performance uh, against Kerr Finn. Have Sawtell shown Mike Cullen what you just don't do against Kerr Finn this weekend? 
Uh, I don't think so, no. Um, like, I think if, if if the game was played another nine or n nine times out of ten, I think Salty will probably put up a better performance. I think they just got caught on the day. Um, I just don't think... I don't think they even got an opportunity really to tactically show how they wanted to set up, if I'm honest. Um, I just thought the game got away from them very quickly. Um, it was 5-0, uh, rapid enough. Um, and then just, unfortunately, Kurt Finn, a little bit like what Norman said, they just make better decisions. They kill the game. They, they're able to... They're able to sh shut you down, give you no oxygen, maybe not even want to go ahead that much more themselves. Like, I mean, five minutes is fine for them, and then they can just they can just kind of sh sh strangle the game on you. Like, you know, I watched them against, um, well, I've not even watched them against, well, since I've gone to up there, I think we've had them every year. Um, and I think we've been in the game every year and we've come away from it with a, a glorious defeat, if you want to call it that, and kind of been really happy with ourselves. And they've kind of been in second or third gear and and just managed the game well. So I think Mike Cowlin will have learned a little bit, but I think they'll have learned a little bit from every game. Um, will it be enough for them? I don't know. Um, I think I think they're a completely different animal in terms of uh, what they do than Salt Hill at the moment. I mean, Salt Hill have, a, have, have an unbelievable talent pool as well. Um, but I think Mike Cullen are are that much more um experienced and um and their game plan is a lot more sharpened in terms of what they do they they've they have um they have turnovers uh, waiting to happen in in every line as well and they'll they'll catch you like you know so um it'll be an intriguing one it's it's um it's it's two very uh, different styles and two very similar styles in terms of defensively as well but um but two really patient teams Norman, Alan mentions two patient teams, but what both of these teams love to do when they play games is just control the game. Well, they're, they're two similar teams, but they're two, but they're two not so similar teams as well, if that makes sense. Like, Curfin are a really sharp kick-passing team. If they, they can skip lines and they can they can turn defence into attack in, in moments like the three, four seconds, the whole thing can change. And the shape they hold, the width they hold, the depth they create, the interplay between the forwards, the, the transition of positions, it's and their defensive strengths, along with everything else, is phenomenal. And then you have my Culliner, that hard running team that if they get a run yeah, like Curfin won't let them get that run, I'm sure they'll have their their set up in a way that they'll they'll won't they won't allow my Cullen run through that. But if they if they do get through the gaps and they have some really hard runners there and they've some really hard runners on the bench like that like even the sub they have to bring on, like the Michael Rileys and these boys, they're they're really hard, hard runners. And if they if they break a line, they can, they can get goals, and they will be looking for. My Cullen love to get goals, like they do. Well, they can score points as well. They they can score up to two or three goals if they get a run on a team. No, obviously Curfin won't let them get that run. You'd imagine the next day because Curfin are just Curfin, but that's what my Cullen will be looking to do when they did win those county titles. It was their hard running game. And when they won their kind of championship a few years ago, it was their hair running game and guys coming around the corner on the loop. That so that they, while they're they're not awfully dissimilar, they are dissimilar in in, in ways. So it'll, it'll be a fascinating game the next day. And, and Sunday is promised fairly good. Looking at the weather there, Saturday wouldn't be as nice for for the teams that are playing on Saturday. And, and that 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 can be huge this time of the year because I know we played on the Sunday and it was an awful day and we played on with the Saturday game I was at other games and they were nice it was a nice day to play football so you can be as lucky to get a run in the championship even for a lesser team the Mike Collins and Curfins not they they know it. they know the conditions they know what's going to come up against if this game was in Saul Till definitely Mike Collins be more familiar with it but it's in Tume and Curfin will be way more familiar with, with uh, and they'll they prefer they'll probably prefer Tume. It's kinda of, it's kinda of their home now. Um whereas the likes of Mike Cullen like that the open spaces and that two halves of football in in Curf in Salt Hill they have that off to a T. So it, it will be it'll be fascinating to see how it all pans out. But there there is while there is some errors there, they're definitely different though both those teams. Just on the Curfin starting fifteen to start against Salt Hill. It was Bernard Power, Liam Sill, Carl Sill, Brian Cogger, Dylan McHugh, Connor Cunningham, Kieran Malloy, Patrick Egan, Mike Farrer, Dylan Wall, Jack McCabe, Jason Leonard, Dara Silk, Gary Sice, and Dylan Canny. For whichever one of you wants to come in there, but do you, do you expect the line out with that exact 15 or do you expect them to make changes? I can jump on that. I mean, like if you look at that team that started there, 
12 of those lads started in the, the final last year. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so that they, they don't change a lot, uh, Cora Fina. They don't need to change a lot. Um, the worrying thing I'd have if I was Mike Cullen is the three lads that didn't start in the final last year are possibly three of their best players in terms of this year. So Michael Farrer, Jason Leonard, Dylan Canny didn't play in 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 the final. If 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 they if it might have come on as a sub, um, I suppose Dylan Canny is their top scorer this year, um, and. Um, the funny thing about it is as well we played them and, and I think they, they scored 12 points I think they had 10 different scorers so even though he's their top scorer he's still in terms of their their um, they, I, I think he's 10th top scorer in the in the in club championship this year the same as uh, the same as my watch for my column same, they, they have the same exact scores so I suppose my point there is that they're, the other teams are relying on these shooters an awful lot more I don't think it matters to Cora Finn whether they don't play Gary Sice or they don't play Darius Silk or they don't play McCabe. Like they're they just have that system, like you know. Um, so I'd be I would say to be very very similar. Um, whoever gets dropped or whoever is 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 not playing is is probably. I suppose the culture seems to be that good that they don't they don't they don't seem to to have an issue with it um because they've done so well in other games it's it's probably just horses for courses so you'd probably see one change I'd imagine yeah and even if you look at the subs to come on Michal Lundy Tony Gill Colin Brady Gavin Burke and Goy senior football panelist Kieran Brady mm. it's just interesting on that Norman with Kieran Brady maybe. Is is he someone that could be deployed when you're just thinking of Mike Collins' physicality around the middle? He could, but uh, Michael, when you when you go up against Michael Farrer and, and Patrick Egan, they they're always able to like like Patrick Egan was up against John Maher the last day. There probably is nobody playing better football in the country this time of the year than John Maher was, and he was able to handle him. Um, so I don't think Curfin are going to. Knowing any Curfin ex player that I know, I don't think they over worry about the opposition. I think they have such faith and such belief, and it's best it's in them since they were eight, nine, ten, because they know how to play the game, they know how to play the game right, they know how to play the occasion, and they know nine times out of ten they're better than the opposition. So if they get their own game right, if not ten times out of ten, they're, they're going to win the game. So I don't think you'll see Curfin putting too much emphasis into, with all due respect. Doesn't matter who they're playing, whether it was in an Ireland club final or whether it's in a in a county final. I think they know they're they're the they can be the best of what they do when they do it to the best they can do with that. So they have their own high standards, and I think that's where they what they go after. So I'd only imagine the last two weeks in training in, in Curafin, there's probably two or three guys there that are flying across the ground, but they can't get into that. They can't get into that team. It's it's such. The standards are so high that everybody that's in there knows that if I come off the gas even 5%, there's a hell of a chance I won't be starting the next... I might start again for the rest of the year. So it's a, it's a wonderful place to be for the likes of Kevin Johnson and, and that management team and the players themselves because that's just the curve in culture for the last 20-odd years. They, they are just the best at what they do and everyone else is trying to, to rise to that standard at, at club football. And I think, I think it's great for Galway club football that they are the, the standard setters. Because they're so good at what they do, everyone else has to get up to that level to compete. And if you don't get up to that level, you're you're not going to survive against them. So I think I don't. I wouldn't put too much emphasis into what Curfin team play. I'd say they won't change it a lot, unless they have to. Because all the players played so well against Salt Hill, it'd be very hard to take someone out of there. But it's a it's a it's an it's an awful uh, embarrassment of riches to have to have guys that are in in the Goa panel. You, you really know you're in a really strong place, like. A lot of other clubs would have under twenty players, maybe that mightn't make their their senior team, or but they have senior senior players that are coming in in their first twenty. But I think as well, we probably don't. We look fast. I think Curfin are so far down the track as well. They'd be they'd be more into who's finishing the game than than who's starting the game. I don't think they'd put too much emphasis, and I don't think the players would either. They know that winning takes a squad to win, and I think they would be looking at that as. I'm finishing the game. I'm not starting the game, and I have a, probably a more important role to play than the guys that actually start. The guys that start will set the platform for for them, and then the guys that come in will be the guys that will finish the job off. And a lot of the time, you'd often say to players, "There, do you want to be on the pitch at the end, or do you want to be on the pitch at the start?" Because you you probably can't 
if we're going to use 20 guys, you can't have the same guys on the pitch at the end of the start. It just doesn't work out mathematically. So I think Curve in are way past that at this stage of their development. I suppose the only caveat to that might be, Norman, that's like, is this size? Size for Mike Cullen is, I mean, from playing against them, like the, you're looking out, even as a keeper wise or as, as, as starting, starting to play and they've, they could at any time they could have, and I'll call them monsters, like they have eight absolute monsters out in the middle of the pitch. Three Kellys, who had I Cook, McLaughlin, Clark, Davern, Maloney. Like that's gonna be that's gonna be a big one, like because they give them a serious platform in terms of pressing the kick out. Um and and I suppose it it just depends on I know there's a few injury concerns within that, but that might be the only kind of Kevin Johnson headache that he'd be going, okay, well, you know. Do we need to match them? Maybe they don't need to match them. Maybe they think that they, maybe they, they, they think they won't need to match them in terms of kickouts that they'll have enough possession off their own and and being smart enough not to turn it over. Like you know, well, what they seem to do last year a lot was if they did get it, they, they put such pressure on them. Like the Corfins work rate last year in that final was phenomenal. Like they they pressed like men possessed. Like they knew last year was kind of a development year for them. That 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 for the year down the line now. But they they know if they have to if they don't win it on phase one they they'll get it back on phase two or phase three or they'll definitely go after there'll be a reliance to go after it there won't be a a thing that oh they caught a mark there the second and third phase Corfin Corfin might concede some of that high ball and then really go after it on the ground because they they have the ability to do that but like when you have a half back line possibly the likes of Dylan McHugh Connor Cunningham and and Kieran Malloy like you're not you're not going to get bet too much in the air right like they they will mix it up they will switch and swap and. As we said at the start, there their intelligence, no more than my Cullen's. Like for all the weapons my Cullen have, Curfin will go the other way. Like and they'll be they'll be looking to and, and all these players are so intelligent on both teams that they can slip in and out of positions and they can see things happen inside the white lines and they can put their finger on the pulse of the game. And I said that that's why it's just that game intelligence. That's what you're always trying to to coach into teams at the moment. Like if you can get that game intelligence within the game. Especially in Galway, because it's very hard to get messages in on the pitch in Galway. You can't be shouting in and Galway is a waste of time, really, because you, you can't get inside the sideline. Whereas in other counties, you could be halfway in on the pitch to get. You can send in runners, you can send in water boys. But in Galway, it's very, very well policed. So you, you, you the players really do have to coach themselves in Galway. It's a, it's a totally different ball game to other counties that should be used to. Um, I've definitely seen a lad like you, Laura, with this being in on the pitch. I, I, I think he was you. I'm not sure, but he looked like. <laughs> Yeah, but you be put back fairly quick, Alan. As you know yourself, you won't be. <laughs> you got cute. You actually went in and played. I'm that that extra ten or twelve years has me uh, ruled out of that return to play <laughs> scenario. <laughs> Alan, it was really interesting there when you were touching on the Mike Cullen physicality because you obviously came up against him. But one thing as well, the Mike Cullen system, like it, they've they've really mastered it at this stage now. They're three or four years into it. I know they've switched managements, but. Kyle Clancy and Kieran Murphy have been involved with that group for quite a while now, even since their last county title in 22. But the way David Wynn and Johnny Maloney sit back in the pockets for them, and what is it about the Mike Cullen system that makes it hard to break them down to? Uh, it's good. It's a it's a good point, and it's it's um like I think I've been at most of my Cullen games this year. I mean, it was a slow burner this year. Because when you look at Dunmore's game against them, they were beaten. Like they, they were beaten in the game, bar a, bar a mistake or two. Um, the system didn't uh, the, the wasn't working at all that day. That probably mm. was um, as a consequence of their league campaign, where they where they had literally no um, continuity in the league at all. Like they, I'd say the players that played in the league, there's there isn't there isn't every team that they they put out. There probably was eleven non-starters if you want to call it that and that's not been disrespectful to any of them but um so they were a slow burner um I'd, I'd say also because that they had the I won't say the weaker side but they had a they Corfin have played harder teams and, and not just uh, from our side like from the Ultra Art side but they I think Ultra, they, Corfin have played a little bit more they've had to be on their game a little bit more but um my Cullen have kind of cruised at times after that Dunmore game. I mean, the James, it was the James is in, in Pierce Stadium I watched as well. It was very slow, kind of a slow burner. And it was um they had the game won, even though they were only about maybe two points up most of the time. Like, you know. Um, they just seem to be doing enough all year. Yeah, so I suppose the the one thing about my Cullen is though, I mean, they I know the the opposition they played, okay, fair enough. There's goals in them. They've scored nine goals versus the Corfin six goals. If you want to call it that? I know it's been, but goals goals aren't easy scored, and it's a habit of scoring goals. So 
Um, I suppose if I was Cora Finn, I'd be saying one of the things that, that they may do is that a little bit like the the Tume did in the in the league final, is that they might hit them air, airily in the square a bit. Um because it's probably if you want to try and find some weakness in terms of Cora Finn, if and, and you have to try and get the ball to to be delivered in there, and that's what Cora Finn will stop you doing as well. But um that that day against Tume, I was at that game and they, and they 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 looked susceptible to to that ball into the square for for and and my calling have a few that they'll be able to put in there. They put McLaughlin in there against us at times. They have Fionn McDonagh. They've um they have the Kellys obviously ro- ro- roaming in and out and they've so I mean that there's there's options to change but but defensive their, their defensive system is really sharp. They're um fluid enough though as well in terms of of they love a turnover and they love they they they, they, they love to get they love to catch you centrally i mean i mean that's that probably won't help you against Corfin because they're so stretched and they're so systematic in terms of bringing the ball down one side and bringing it all over the way all over the far side again and that but um so it's going to be it's going to be really contrasting styles because um one way that that's my calling catch you Corfin don't want to be caught like that and then Corfin the way they attack um, will probably let my my colleague probably let them do that at times. So it'll be it'll be chicken and egg. But um, it's uh, Norman said earlier it depends it depends on the day and it does usually depend on the day. Like if it's an arm wrestle, it's probably going to be suit maybe my colleague a little bit more. If it's a lovely sunny day and and there's no breeze in that, Corfim probably licking their lips a little bit more than than my colleague. I think there's very few people in the county Norman that will predict my colleague to win this weekend. If you were Mike Holland, would you would you start to feed into that? Oh, absolutely. Well, you you take any little angle you get, but I don't think Mike Holland need that. Like they're this is kind of best of five scenario. We have two, you have two. Let's see who's the best though. And um, I think Mike Holland know themselves that if if they get it all right on the day, they're more than good enough to win this game. Like they have a lot of guys there with, with county medals in their pockets that they won't have any. It, it was, like there's going to be no nerves in this game for anyone. Like there'll obviously be the small bit of it's a big game, but it's, it's just another game. But these are two teams that can play the the game and stay on the game. They're they're, they're not going to get affected by the occasion. So I think my Cullen are well set to win this game. Like, what comes down to for me, hugely for my Cullen, is how how is everybody? If every if my Cullen can ramp up with their best team in the best form. There's no shadow of doubt they can win this game. Uh, but they need everybody coming fit, like watching Peter Cook and James McLaughlin and Niall Welsh missing the last day. And then who else? Someone else went off. Desi went off. Like he looked heavily strapped. Like I don't think I've seen as many lads as heavily strapped in championship. Like nearly going back to my own playing days. Like the this strapping thing has gone very in back in vogue again like there was a lot of heavy strapping on a lot of guys in in some of those games and Alan will tell you there we've all played ourselves and we've all played lads on teams that you think geez I have to we, we, he's the best we have we have to play him and when you have a guy heavily strapped and that, that's fine if the guy you're marking is heavily strapped but this is this is my Cullen versus Cora Finn. This is the best of the best against the best of the best. There is nowhere to hide. If you have missed the last 10 training sessions and just got through the last four games and the, the guy you're marking has done the last 10 training sessions and he's been absolutely flying across the grass in either my Cullen or Cora Finn, you won't survive. It's just, it, there's not, it's not possible. So I think it'll come down to can my Cullen play 18, 19, 20 guys that are fully fit with no knocks, with no niggles, if they have that, they have a hell of a chance. And they'll Cora Finn have that extra few players that if it did happen to them, they probably can go a bit deeper and not be as affected. But everybody knows Peter Cook is so important to Mike Cullen. Desi Keneally is so important. Niall Welch, those three on fire can can win that game on their own. And then the other guys like Jared Avern, how was he able to motor? How was James McLaughlin able to motor? Tom Clark will always do what Tom Clark does. Like he'll always dominate. He'll always put himself around the place. He'll always bring that physicality to it. So David Wynn will drive it from six there. So to answer your question, there's n- absolutely f- Mike Cullen will have one hundred percent belief that they can win the game. They they'll they love being the underdog the next day because it's nearly role reversal from last year. It was Mike Cullen going from for three and four last year, was it or something? People were saying, and then all mm. of a sudden Corvin said, "Not on our watch," because like. This is our this is our playground. We we don't let anybody win 
these county finals only us. And I think it's set up for my Cullen if they if they if they want the underdog tag, they'll definitely have it this weekend. And I think it's it's set up perfectly for them to it's it'll be it won't be a big underdog story if my Cullen win this because any of the two teams could win this on Sunday. It's and especially if it's a nice fine day, it could come into a right a right good game of football, which everyone would love to see. And of course, Sean Kelly obviously missed last year's final. Nile Walsh was only able to come on for the bench with injury. If you look at the my column fifteen here, and we're just going to presume everyone's fit this weekend because there's no point to predict him because um no one from my column's going to tell you who's fit and who's not this weekend. But um, <laughs> but if you if you look at their fifteen, and this is if they have everyone: Andrew Power, Michael Mahon, Sean Kelly, Connor Corcoran, Owen Kelly. David Wynn, Johnny Maloney, James McLaughlin, Jared Davern, Peter Cook, Paul Kelly, Tom Clark, Desi Keneally, Niall Walsh, Owen Gallagher. Like if, Alan, if if they can start with that, like, and it's, it's something they just haven't been able to have all year with their full team. Yeah, if, if they can start with that, it's, it's um, this game, uh, I'm not trying, it, this game is going to be an arm wrestle for a while anyway. Okay, so like last year, if you, I think it, there was there were level seven times before before Corfin started to pull away. Um, I think it there was a late goal, if I'm not mistaken, for for Mike Cullen, um, Johnny Maloney that kind of brought it back into into um, into the melting pot again. But so go back to what Norm is saying about starters and finishers. I mean, like if 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 you're a player like Cook or like Desi, Desi's a funny one now because like freeze is going to be important. Paul Kelly was on the freeze last weekend when Desi went off. Um, he and, missed a close one in there to go. Yeah, this, this, this is what I'm going to say. Yeah, I mean that. that uh, and Paul is Paul's accurate, and Paul is, but he 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 doesn't have the the reps, if you want to call it, done in terms of free taking like Desi has. So that's going to be really important, um, and it's going to be really important in a final. I mean, Gary Sice, I think, got five points last year in the final. Four of them were from freeze, um, and I mean, the, so it's going to be starters versus finishers, um, and it's going to be. I, I think it's going to take 15, 20 minutes anyway for that first half for the game to open up for the game. To, it'll be ticky tacky. It'll be, it'll be, you'll possibly see Michael Farrer again on the ball, walking pace at times. Um, and Mike Cullen letting him do that. Um, I don't think they'll let him do it later on in the game though, if I'm honest. Um, but they might, they might let, they might let the, the game kind of um, develop and see. Um, but I suppose what, what other teams haven't been able to do is, is stop him uh, later on dictating and, and, um, and also stop, I suppose, Bernie Power dictating in terms of when when the game's in the melting pot that he just pulls out what he needs to pull out and um, whether that be Dylan Canny coming out to a sideline catching the ball where you don't expect him to or, or, or far or flicking one on. I remember, I think, think that was clear Galway and then they just they just found a way. Like So back to Mike Cullen, um, it's, if you presume everyone is going to be fit, they they have a great chance because they still have players like the Miola O'Reilly's and even the Keen Deans and the... And Mulcahy's and these lads to come off, uh, to come off the to come off the off the bench, and and they're they they're they're seasoned players. Claffy last weekend, so I mean, there's 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 nothing between these two teams. Yeah, it's one thing Carl Clancy has done this year, Norman. He's developed a panel. Maybe they might have looked back at last year's county final, and maybe they didn't get as much as their bench from as Kerfin did. But like you look at it, Michal O'Reilly, Neil Mulcahy, Phil McDonough. Killian Gallagher, Aidan Claffy, Sean O'Connor, Keane Dean, like there, there is depth there in my column. Ah, uh, there is, and they've got a lot of game time in the league. All some of the nights when they were available, um, I know from Tony Paul when we played them in the league, they were always turning over players, like they were getting lads back from work. They were maybe working in in Europe and they were coming back for an odd game. And some weeks you could run into them and they'd be fairly heavily stacked. And other weeks you could run into them and they just weren't stacked at all. Um, in in the league. But definitely, they probably develop players through that because they stuck with their 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 said principles and the, and I'm sure they had their own standards that, that they weren't going to drop. Um, so guys were getting game time to come into it. But like talking about the likes of those those subs there, like that Phil McDonough, he he's a handful now. He's he's a huge man and he's very hard to stop and he's very skillful. And then that Michael O'Reilly is a really really hard runner. Like when he gets up traction, he like these guys are physically built to. Compete against um, Corfin, they they won't have any problem. So, like they have the cover there. The problem is how deep is the cover after that cover? If they have to go to that cover too early, that's that'll be mm. the thing. So it, it will be important that they have a if they have a clean bill of health there. But it's it, it'll be a fascinating game because there is no 
the, this could come down to a disciplinary thing. This could come down to something where, like, a familiarity breeds contempt. They say, like, it, th- these two teams are so used to each other. They'll they'll know each other. There won't need to be huge analysis meetings before these games because these two teams know each other inside out. And probably, if the truth be told, my Cullen at the start of the year would be looking at we have to beat Curra Finn to win the championship, and Curra Finn would probably be looking at at the start of the year we have to beat my Cullen to win the championship. And that's no disrespect to any other fourteen teams in it. Outside of probably Salt Hill, we're the closest to the to the betting at the time, and we're going really well. And, and I thought myself would be a really dark horse for it. Um, just unlucky it didn't work out for them on the last day. But it, it just shows where Curra Finn are at that the way they were able to to get through Salt Hill, that a really really good Salt Hill team. But I think these two teams knew from a long way out. Bearing a disaster, Bearing getting caught really off guard on a day, we're going to have enough to get to the final. And then it's can we beat these guys and can. Can they beat these guys? It's I think it's they've been eyeing each other up for a long way out when they didn't meet any sooner in the draw. One of the variables there also we haven't been spoken about is Owen Gallagher like living away and like this year you were in the league no, no, no more than we were with uh, you, you would have seen Gallagher kind of coming back not training in, in my calling coming back for games probably a bit rusty etc cetera, etc. Cetera. He seems to have just been ticking over and ticking over and ticking over and now against. I'd love to see his stats on assist of scores. Unbelievable, because you see, he 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 commits players, he commits bodies, and you ha- you have to you 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 have to because he's he's his not to sixty is very quick, like so. Therefore, he's gone on you, um, and I think he's got a lot fitter with the with with the games and championship, um, and I think he's got a lot better. And you're you're a hundred percent right in terms of he's not the one that's that's popping up in terms of the score sheets, but he's the one that's that's sucking in the bodies to to be able to pop it off, be it uh, mm-hmm. be it against us, Cooks Cook scores. I don't know how many of them came from Gallagher or popping it to him. Um, yeah, he's yeah. brilliant at bringing the loop runners in around. He's he's brilliant at he's the guy that runs hard at teams, and then the Desi comes around the corner, or the, pops it back to the Peter Cook. He's a really intelligent footballer. Like he's he probably was one of the best club footballers in Galway for the last couple of years. Um, working away in Dublin, like I was very lucky to we played them in a challenge last year with Kilconley Connolly uh, down Gary Moore in in the preliminary time when there was a break for a month, and like he was phenomenal. That like some of the what I liked was the intelligence of these teams. Like, I think at one stage the two wing forwards for my column were standing actually outside the flags down in Garymore. They were st- they were using the width of the pitch that wide that they were they were actually off the pitch when they were in possession to create that width. So that when they got the ball, they could only move forward. They they had themselves in a, at an angle that they could that they weren't able to go other than forward. They were able to tack forward all the time. So it, it was a massive education for us and, and a brilliant game of the night. But the one brilliant thing about him, like, and like one of our guys got badly hurt, and he just stopped straight away and turned into doctor mode and looked after him, and then went back playing again. It's just like he's a phenomenal man, I'd say, on and off the field. So it, uh, he could be, he could be a real. If he if he comes home on the next day, he will take handling for sure and for certain. There is this thing about Mike Cullen, like they've they've had so much success in the last few years, but for this group. The one thing they haven't done is beating Curfing in a county final. A lot of people like that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and I mean that's that's a little extra percentage, and that's that'll drive them on. And this uh, from no one, I taught a good few of these lads in school. Actually, funnily enough, like the Connor Corcorans and these lads, and they they love a little chip on the shoulder. Like they love they love to to try and beat the odds. Like and um and they'll be. So there'll be a little bit of dark arts going on in this in this game. You can be sure as well. And uh, as a Norman said, there'd be you wouldn't be surprised if it was a discipline something. You know, that someone got black carded or, or whatever it might be, and they'd be down to there'd be a numerical advantage. Um, but I, yeah, I look at I, I I I still I still think that it's going to be I think it's going to be low score if I'm honest with you. I, I don't think um, especially Corfin this year. They like everyone's talking about Corfin saying that they're. That they're planning for, <laughs> that they're planning for for Connacht nearly already. Like and, and, and games, you know, two three games ago. And I mean, okay, that's dangerous and that, but they have to, I suppose, in terms of that they got caught last year. So, um, I mean, they they won't change the way they're playing. They won't change that methodical uh, composure game where where they don't care if they're only a point or two ahead of you. They're they're nearly happy with that. Like you know, um, I think Mike Cullen will probably. If if someone has to panic first, I think it'll be Mike Cullen that'll that'll have to show a little bit more um off the cuff. And that kind of suits them. The Kelly's running at you, Galler running at you, 
you know, they're a little bit more of an off-the-cuff team, I think, um, which is which is a dangerous thing um, as well because of the fact that they're not easy to predict what they're going to do. Like, you know, Mulcahy popping up for a score for a goal the last day. Like, will you predict that? You're not really, wouldn't you? You wouldn't predict that. But, I mean, that's that's probably what they're going to have to try and bring to it, you know? Can they bring that chaos to it, uh, my Cullen? Because if they can, they're, they're probably the team that's most suited for the chaos. Because yeah. um, like to have it structured. They like to have it... On the control, and when Corfin get heady, it is very hard to reel them in. When you when you watch them over the years, they 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 go further out. Really, they don't. You don't reel them in. They they go further out, and uh, the more the game goes on, because they they're just so good at their execution. So Mike Cullen will know that really well, and they they as Alan said, there they keep that game really tight for periods, and it's, whoever leads it early could control it for the whole game. Um, and again, we've seen ourselves against you. A small error, like an individual error here or there, could be huge in a game like this. Like, you know, a goal against the run of play, they, we've all seen it, we've all come across it this year. It hurt ourselves there in a, against Tune where we were right in the game and then a goal against the run of play or you miss a free that you should get and the other team go down and get a score. That, that's a two-point swing without any new rules. And then, as you said, if a goal goes in against you that you, you could have easily not given away, it's a huge moment as well. So it, it does really come down to individual really getting their own game spot on the next gen. But again, you're you're blessed in both them teams that they have that that kind of player. So it, it probably will with the with the standard of players that are there come down to someone just being in the wrong place at the wrong time and not executing the skill set to the absolute maximum because that's the fine margins you're probably talking about. It it really will come down to something tiny like that like because the, it, it'll be hard to separate those two teams the next day. I suppose the other thing as well, Paul, and this isn't being disrespectful to, 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 to or trying to be disrespectful to anyone, is that like Corfin of the continuity in terms of Johnson, like being there. I think he he's there since, if I'm not mistaken, he's there four years as well. Um, I think he was there the year I the year I was in Uktarard. I mean, so therefore, this is a new setup for Michael, and I understand it'll be fresh and all that. But like, I mean, if Johnson has 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 bedded in his own culture and his own way of playing, and they've bought into it, and and they're they're you know they're relentless in what they do. Like so, that I know my Cullen aren't, aren't as advanced in terms of of uh, I know they have continuity, but they've they've still have different people on the sideline in different roles, and and possibly the McHugh announcement last week uh, as well. Will that have an effect? I don't know. Yeah, I think I think it's three years, um, because the beaten to Montpellier in twenty one, that would have been Kevin O'Brien's last year. And then Johnson came in first year, he was beaten by Montpellier in the quarter, and then um obviously last year went on and then this is now is there something we haven't touched on. Matchups. How do you see this planning out? Uh I think that the, the system of my Cullen will need matchups a little bit more than the Corfin. Um, system, if I'm honest, um, just the way the way my Colin are, um, I think Corfin probably like it's 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 a funny one because the elephant in the room here is Corfin in terms of getting everyone back behind the ball a lot of the time, um, which probably isn't the traditional Corfin way, um, and <laughs> they get away with it a lot probably because they win, um, I know I've I've been uh, I I've been uh, I won't say ridiculed but I've been asked to. Uh, a lot of hard questions at times. Why don't you? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? But they, Corey Finn have 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 a strong strong system in terms of trying to break it down. And and um, a lot of times, if you see if Gary Zeiss or if, if if Dylan Canny play, you will see them inside their own forty five. Um, and I suppose what I'm saying there is that the the matchups may not need to be as strong because of the fact that they may have more players back at times. If it's Mike Cullen. You may not see Desi back, or you may not see Fionn McDonagh back. Um, so therefore, the matchups are more, more, um, more important because it's it's a little bit more space in one v ones. Um, so I suppose what I'm saying there is that my Colin need to get their matchups better than than Curvin. Just on it because we we've touched on it. Uh, Gary Sice's influence. It's even his. He's nearly like a coach for Curvin inside. But do you think Norman, when Mike Cullen look at it and they see the damage size did last year, do you think they'll be looking straight away at putting Sean Kelly on? Well, if it matches up that way, but I don't know, will they leave Gary Sice tracking Sean Kelly on yeah. every occasion? But they're, they're very good curve in a pass it off. Like, Gary, you go with him. Like, you get around Gary, best luck to you because 
it's, he won't give you a free run out like um and he will take a bit off you going by um he, the second time it'll be someone else and the third time it'll be someone else like the one thing about Curfin, they're really good at passing it over if Sean Kelly makes two breaks and someone has to take him to stop him on the first break he won't be the same guy fouling him the next time it won't, and it won't be the same guy fouling him the third time it'll be it could be persistent fouling but it'll be no stage will be consistent fouling by the same player so they won't match up as Alan said match up match up but they will be awful aware of different threats like like the Dylan McHugh Peter Peter Cook that could be a match up um, that could be a great match up that could be worth the interview alone because you have your Peter Cook playing really good club football and your Dylan McHugh who was playing absolutely out ridiculous inter-county football so like and was was one of the best players in the country this year so like that could be huge then like Conor Cunningham could be on Paul Kelly like will they push Jared Devon up or will they push Jared Devon back or will Jared Devon play around midfield like that him and Kieran Malloy could end up matching up there and like Tom, you could see Tom Clark and Michael Farrer matching up around the middle with Patrick Egan probably kind of roaming and then can James McLaughlin have the legs like Patrick Egan is is another match winner like people don't realise how good Patrick Egan is I think um, just yeah I don't think he's getting the kudos he we've been watching this guy when he was playing in the media with Curfin and we had a mirror marked a long way out this guy is a special talent like and he's probably one of the heir to the throne for Paul Conroy and these when they finish up in Galway but He's a goal. He's he's a guy that when he breaks lines, he's he's a goal threat. He's, like he's a, to get a midfielder that goes box to box and is a goal threat, and he, he's a serious goal threat. Like so, I think Mike Cullen will be very wary of him. I think, going from talking to Kieran Murphy and, and Paul and them lads over the years, like they, they'll be very wary of the, the hair run and coming from deep from Curfin that they don't give away any goals. Like Niall Welch will take Markin if he's in the edge of the square for um for the for Mike Cullen and then. Like, will Carl Silk take him or will Liam Silk go back in on him? Like, you could see Liam Silk matching up with Owen Gallagher. That's another one that's worth the admission alone if the two of them match up. And then Brian Cogger could be on Desi if De- like if Desi is, is fit to play there. So, like, there's a lot of different matchups. Like, you could have Jack McCabe out at 11 on David Wynn. Like, Dave Wynn likes to drive forward. Jack McCabe will have no problem check- tracking him back. Like, I think the real match winner and he's back to form is, is Jason Linner. I think when Jason Linner plays well, Curfin are awful hard to beat. I think he's a fabulous footballer. Like I think he's awful underrated. Um, I think he's an absolutely outstanding. Technically, he's a really class. He's just watched him in the league final against Toome there, and the width he keeps, the way he comes off the line, he'll wait for the ball to go inside. Derek Sisel might win it, and he he'll come like a train off him. Like he's a real. He just so again. It goes back to that intelligence that. Like you could, the player we haven't even spoke about is Dara Silk, who's probably playing some of the most outstanding football he's played. Um, like in some of the games this year, he's he's been ridiculous. Like, and another thing we didn't touch on really is, Corfin seem to be this year dropping out to the fort. They seem to give you the ball inside your own forty-five, and then they wall it at that far. And if they don't catch on the first forty-five, as Alan said there, they will. They will go. Yeah, the, the turnover they, they got. Can... Turnover they got yeah. on Evan Wynn is a prime example of that in the second. Yeah. Yeah, I think their press is a lot higher up the field than it was maybe last. I think they're definitely evolving in a higher press. But they know they again they go back to they know, depending on the level of the standard of the player we're playing against, we'll go higher and higher and higher. And if they're better, we'll go deeper and deeper and deeper. These guys and it's not just these guys, like you have the Dave Morrises and the like I remember, like these guys are a lot they have so many guys in the back room that know that are doing analysis and they, they, they could have three or four guys doing the job that another club would have one guy doing. So that they, they, they're very deeply educated in an awful lot of aspects and analysis wise and analytical wise, they're they'll have everything off to an absolute T like so that's I think that's why they're so composed and they know how to to win these matches and they know how to control these matches. I think that they, they have it practiced over and over and over again in training that they, they know that when these moments occur, this is what we do. This is the Curfin way. This is the way we do, do it and this is the way we're successful at it. And I think that while there are some brilliant matchups there, I think it will depend on when team, if they don't get you on the first 45, they'll get you on the second 45. They definitely won't be naive enough just to stay with their own man. So that there'll be a lot, of, a lot of different aspects of the tactically of the, of the game because you have you've a lot of good coaches involved there as well that will have the teams really well prepared like Alan Norman was just touching there on some of the um how Kerr Finn could tie up with Mike Holland just finally before we get predictions uh 
my calling from a defensive perspective, you might expect that maybe Owen Kelly could be someone who could end up in the full back line this weekend and maybe pick up Dar Silk. I don't know, does Connor Corcoran then go to Dylan Canny? Sean Kelly go on Sice when Sice stays in around the square? Maybe then Michael Mahan goes on Dylan Wall because Dylan Wall has been central up and down. And he, he's already, Norman's already mentioned there, I suppose, David Wynn and Jack McCabe. And then I suppose it's Johnny Maloney and Jason Leonard. Yeah, so I suppose the the funny it's a funny one. So Owen Kelly, Owen Kelly is probably the one that Mike Cullen will push on. We'll call it the best player or the most um, the most influential player because um, he's done that in every in every game uh, this year. Whether it be um, whether it be Kelly McDade against Monave, whether it be Conroy or Hover or James, whatever it might be. So he's the one that. They kind of forsake, or they he's the one that they give the job to, and he's pretty good at it. If I'm honest. Um, so you have you have Michael Mahon who likes to get up and down the pitch as well, and he's decent on the ball. Um, and he's kind of one of these that that um, I suppose he's he's under the radar a bit. Uh, so he's again the lad that could be on the second last or pass or the or the last pass before the assist a lot of the times because he's he's got good legs he's got now he's got good size he's a lot of conditioning done um so he'll he'll be one that can that'll be able to mark a man work really well but also be able to affect the game high up the pitch um i i think the they probably need to look at Dylan Kenny because the fact that he didn't play last year and he has contributed the most scores this year to, for Corey Finn. I know a lot of them have been from freeze and et cetera. So um, he's one that they probably haven't encountered before to, to this degree. So if, if he, if he scores what he, what his averages should suggest he'll score against, um, against Mike Cullen, uh, they'll need to lock him down because um, as I said, Nile Walsh on the opposite side has the same amount of scores got as him, but Nile Walsh has been struggling with injury the last two weeks or the last two games now. But that hamstring, so will he be right or will he be as, as explosive as as previous? Probably not, if I'm honest. Um, but there's a lot of good matchups. I mean, but we've we, the, the Egan one is a funny one as well because, like, how long are we now saying that Egan is breaking through or talking about intermediate football or he played for the intermediates before? Like, if I'm not mistaken, Egan started the final last year. Um, so yeah. you know, he pulled them through against Clare Galway this year, two unbelievably strong goals. Um, quality goals just to kill the game at the time where I probably thought there was oxygen coming and he just finished the game. One of them was straight after half time on a turnover from from the from the kick out. Um so so he's one that probably it's difficult to see who they could put on because of the fact that he's he's so efficient in running, he's strong, he's unbelievable skill set, um, and he's still you're talking about intermediate they, but he played for the intermediate a year or two ago so he might not be the one that you'd actually go oh we need to put a marker on him we'll put one on Leonard or we'll put one on you know Dara Silk but but that, that, that this is this is the conundrum you have I mean that, as I said earlier on that they had 10 scorers against us out of 12, 12 points 10 scorers so by the law of averages you're going to pick the wrong one to put a, to match, to put a match up on like um uh, and uh, we probably, uh, I suppose I've talked like we haven't talked about the keepers really at all, if I'm honest. Um, and I think they're going to be, they're going to be huge. The two of those lads are going to be huge. Um, and if you, I know you like your your power rankings. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, I suppose, this is a bit of a twist or a pun on it. I mean, the winner of the game could be who wins the power of the uh, who, which power wins out like, and which who has the who has the most, uh, who gets the percentage of kickouts out and who doesn't make mistakes. Um, and that 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 could be the key in the whole game, you know. Definitely. And it will come down to, it could come down to the two boys in goal. There's no, like I didn't even want to bring it up really because it, it's from playing there myself, it, you know, and you've known Alan, it's such a scrutinised position now. Like it will come down to, this game could come down to who is the best number one on the pitch the next day and whoever can grab the, like Bernie has that experience there and he's really sharp at what he does. Then Andrew has to be confident the next day and, and try and control that game. But it will come down to the best keeper on the day will probably be the team that wins the game um, because it's such a, it's such a position now that it's so important. It is crucial in, in modern football. And it's not just your kick outs, it's, it's the handling, it's the, the confidence you give the guys behind you, the control, the, 
like you when you're playing against the six forwards that are on both them two teams next day, you have to know as a defender that this guy behind you knows his job and can you can if he tells you to go left, you go left because you automatically know he's right. And if he tells you to go back or forward, that you have that full belief that he's so schooled in. So it's it's a key position. It's 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 probably the position in the game the next day. Whoever gets that the best. Out of t- out of ten, whoever rates the highest out of ten in that could be the difference between winning the game and and because the other guys out the field are so evenly matched up that it will come down to you're nearly matching up the two keepers now and who can be the best of the two keepers, and that's that won't be known till till Monday. But it it will come down to can you get your ten out of ten performance? If you can, you could be county champion on Monday. If you're even nine, and that's the standard it's gone to, if you're even a nine or an eight, you you might it might not just be good enough. And that's 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 the cruel way. You're not marking anyone anymore, as I just said to lads, but you're the level you're at now as a club senior goalie, intermediate goalie, or an intercounty goalie is it's unforgiven. It's just one mistake, one error, one top of a ball or one under hit kick out and the game can turn, and it's it's huge, like because teams are going after you all the time. They're going after every kick out. They're chasing every ball in. If they think you're even middling in the air, they're harshing ball in top of you. If they think you're good in the air, they're trying to put the ball down low. They, the heaviest, the analysis on the keepers now is huge. Like you could you could spend hours before a game working on a keeper alone. If you, you might even look at some of the outfield players. Some teams you play, you could go so hard after a keeper. So it, it is very hard on them, and I, I mean that in the height of respect because it is a hard position to play now. Ah, and it's a game of luck as well, Norman. I mean, you can have the most experienced player like Bernie Power in there. And I mean, I've seen him this year in, in June get as lucky as any man has ever got against Clare Galway where, um, where uh, Barry Goldie tried to chip him and he, and he, and he, remember he, chipped him short and he, didn't, he didn't get him. Like, it's just sometimes yeah. it's luck. If that was Andrew Power, he might have been able to chip him just for some unknown reason that the, the luck was on his side. Like, you know, so one left footed player, one right footed player, a huge, uh, two good kickers at the ball. To be fair, and two two good yeah. kickers of distance. Um, and it's yeah. it's just it's I just I just think it's 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 a funny one because like my Cullen have monsters as I said they have huge players out the pitch and mm-hmm. that's what to suit them. Cor Femi will push the kickouts. I'd imagine a lot of the time and make them kick it. So and then on the flip of that, like uh, I've seen Bernie Power being being pushed and being stretched and 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 uh, they, they they try and catch him out every time and. However, he manages it. He just the it's it's in the reps. He 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 manages to get the the important one out at the time, and the critical mm-hmm. one gets 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 it to the destination where he needs it, and, and off they go. Like you know, yeah. Well, see, you're talking about Kieran Brady there. Like people forget that is it Olin Burke is in in go like he's another like he'd make any other team in Galway without a sh- shadow of doubt, and maybe in Connacht he's that good of a keeper, but he can't make the curve in team. So like that's. You, when you are literally talking about two for every position, you're you're talking about they genuinely have two for every position plus the more they they have more than that. Like like you'd often talk to lads there, you'd be out working that have three minor A titles for Curlin, but they might never have played adult football for them. Do you know that's that's the level of stuff they're talking about working with, like. But again, that all goes back to this didn't just happen. Like Frank Morris created this years and years ago in national schools and it's it's been ingrained in them and you've Gary Sice out in Bell Clare like they're they're just really smart at what they do and they get the they get the maximum out of what they have. And that's why when you talk about intermediate players, they're they're not intermediate players. It's just it's a school. It's it's the next step. It's they're kinda it's their secondary school before they go to college and their their college is is playing with the big boys on the senior team. But they being a really good intermediate player in Corrafin is is only a stepping stone to getting on the first team, like so. It's, they they use it really, really well. Like, if we're to get to um, predictions for this one, I'm going to start it off. I expect Clare Finn to get over the line here and win by three points at the weekend. Alan, how do you see it? Um, I'm going to go on 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 Matt, and I think I just think there's too many uh, percentages against Michael in terms of injuries. Um. In terms in terms of league performance this year and and how many players have been missing and the gel that wasn't there we'll say against Dunmore and, and and that um and that they they just I think they'll come up short because of that not because of the team that they're going to put out or because of uh, I just think that they're 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 there's too many question marks in terms of injuries and that so I'll I'll give it to Cora Finn. Uh, but by how much four I'm gonna say four. 
Norman, how do you see it? The cast and vote? I'm going to put a right spanner. I'm going to go for a draw at full time. Um, I think I think my Cullen, if they can get any of them bodies on the field at all, in fairly good shape, I think they'll t- they'll they'll have they'll they'll tighten the game up. They'll keep themselves in the game. They're too well coached that the game slip away from them. They're too smart to footballers inside the white lines to let Curfin get a run on them. Now, if, if saying that if Curfin get a run on them, you ain't wheeling them back in. So they know that, like they know that from experience. And I think there has to be a massive, massive performance in my column because they know anything less than a, than a nine out of ten out of all their players won't get them over the line. So that they know what's going to be expected. So I'm going to go for a draw in full time, and I'm not going to call it next to the time because it's not, I don't know does it go to extra time in the final this year. I think I think it's a it's is it is it a replay? But I think replay, I'm going to go. Think, yeah. I, yeah, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a draw on it. Um, I think I think it's it's going to be too finely balanced. It's, it's going to be tit for tat. I think it's going to be pint for pint each end. Possession dropped off, and I think the way the game is going to plan out, I I, I call it. I'm going to go with the draw, Paul. You might get off the fence then for when the, when the <laughs> for, for the replay. <laughs> if we look at if we just look at the um, intermediate semi-finals, lads, uh, the first one on Saturday, St Michael's or Moore Mary, uh, it's a double header in Dugan Park. This one gets underway at two fifteen. I don't know. Did you hear the um or Moore Mary interview after they won the under nineteen title? Um, there last week on Wednesday, Derek Cullenham was being interviewed and he was talking about Dormer's success. And then he said at the interview, um, praising his young lads, and he said, That's why we're returning to senior football. It's it was uh interesting to hear, but I suppose these sides have already met Michaels and Orm Moore in the group. Warren Moore came out on top, and uh, this this is going to be an interesting one here, Alan. Um, it will, yeah. Um, no, a good bit about both teams, but Michael's um I'd say before there was ball kick, probably Michael's were, were favourites for intermediate this year. Um just with the with what they have and the and and I suppose the quality that they have and, and where they've come from. Um or more not being disrespectful to them. I think they kind of came from a little bit from out of nowhere in terms of being able to um get this quickly, I suppose get here so quickly. So they have a lot of momentum. Um mm-hmm. and I suppose Michael's got a big shock in the first game, so it's it's kind of, I suppose who who has who has learned the more the most out of that one in terms of it as like can can they do the same thing again um, or more can 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 Michael's can Michael's kind of uh, learn from the mistakes? I think Michael's will learn from the mistakes. If I'm honest with you, um, I think is Michael- that tough as a manager to beat the same team twice in one year? Um. Alan Glenn, it'll tell you, it'll tell you. I think he didn't they lose. Yeah. Him? Mayo twice and then won the All Ireland. Yeah. Um, so it is a course because I mean, well, I mean, it's 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 not easy playing the same team a few times anyway because the fact that you're learning more about them, they're learning more about you. But um, I think when the ball is thrown in, though, I think that the, the I don't think the players see that as a manager. It's a bit, it's, it's a little bit difficult. But as the from players wise, I, I don't think the players will, will. I don't think they do the research. Or they do the the amount of work that we do probably on the analysis mm-hmm. of it or, or care about it as much. They just when the ball is thrown in, they just kind of. I suppose they'll they'll go hell for leather again. So, um, I I just think a little bit of the of the memories of 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 what happened to Michael's will probably be strong enough for them not to happen to not not to happen again. So, um, and they've I know they're st- not giving anything away. I think they've one or two injury concerns uh, that are that are probably that are big ones for them. So I, I think if they if they get across the line, they'll probably be um I I I'd expect a big showing from Michael's. Yeah. How do you see this one, Norman? Obviously, I think during your Kilconley um tenure as when you were over the Kilconley intermediate team, you did play Orm or Mary quite a bit. Just the first year, but we played in the first year, but they'd be a totally different team now. I was only looking at it earlier. Um, when you asked me from here, I I was think there's only a few of that team left. Um, I remember talking to Mark Ronaldson um last year about that Orm Moore job. Um. Because I had shattered them in in the past about it, but it, it he said that there there's such an array of young lads coming through, um, but they still seem to be very reliant on him and, and Johnny Keller and and these guys up front. Now they they are really good footballers, but the thing is, Michael, I see Michael's play. We played them in a few challenges this year. We play, I watched them play against Curfin in the the league semi final in Division One. 
But intermediate championships a different ball game. The pressure to get back up is is it's it's hard. Like and it does sit on Michaels now. And Mike Monavay held it well last year, and Dunmore were able to carry it the year before. Um, and that was the one thing we were kind of tapping into with Kilconnelly was that there was no pressure on us, and we were able to get a free shot. So or more have that no pressure free shot, but. They played two months ago. Two months ago, the weather was totally different. Like it's, if you get, if Nexard is not promised nice now, physically, Michaels are. I wouldn't know enough about Oran Moore to um, like it. This it'll probably come down to very little again because of the weather conditions. Like, but physically, Michaels are definitely conditioned to for this time of year football. So they and they just dig it out, and and that's what they have to do. They have to dig it out now, and they have to dig it out in two weeks' time to get back up to where they they want to be and they want to right the wrongs of, of last year I'm sure because every team that gets into that position would want to get themselves back up um, and they're a really quality side Michaels and they, and they are a senior side but they have to earn the right to get back up there again and the three teams that left it won't make it easy for them um, so but the great thing is they got conditioned through a tough group if they got a soft group and I think that was the best thing that happened um, on Avail last year. They played Corfin in the second game and Corfin had them bet. And if Corfin got an off, a rub of the green at all that day, I think Monavay could have got an awful shock into into intermediate football. But I think Michaels got their shock the first day out against Oran Moore. And they should have learned enough from all the experience they have that they know that they have to be nine out of ten at least that these teams when you come down you think oh we'll fly back up you won't fly back up but if you go if you get nine out of ten performances for two more hours you will go back up but or more have a free shot like it or more are a team in but someone coming out i didn't see that interview now but she's something like coming out saying that is not going to it's not going to wear too well on the wall of saying michael's destiny that's for sure so the less you say this time of the year the better and let the football do the talking so i think i think michael's but it'll be tight again. It'll be tight again. Um, but again, you could you could, you can't really call. It, but I, I think Michaels will just have enough. But or more have nothing to lose, and and they'll 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 give it everything as well. So, but I just eke towards Michaels from playing them twice. But again, I said I don't know enough about or more to, to to really to comment. But I I know they're definitely a common team for sure, for certain. And Jerry Fahey has done a good job with them as well, as well in terms of rallying them and 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 bringing them together. And and uh, any team that. Any team that's going to be playing with Jerry Five managing them is going to be a uh, coach them is going to be uh, not not an easy not an easy task whether you've beaten them or not beaten them the, the first time round, you know. Yeah, they're not going to take a backward step for sure. So again, that's that's a really tight game. That's probably people look at that the, as the as the harder side of the draw with them two teams because they had such form coming into it. But I I think the other side of the draw will be every bit as 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 tricky because those two teams now have have a real bounce in their step like coming into the other side of it. Yeah, Jerry Fahey has uh, 16 of the under-19 team on the intermediate panel for um, Oren Moore Murray this year. Um, so it's, it's quite um, a large number of players. And you mentioned, I suppose, working with my Cullen players in the past and in the bit, but like one player for Michaels who's really stood up since the Gabriels game, Connolly Gallagher at midfield, scored scored 2-1 in that game. Yeah, sure, Connell is like, I mean, a long time there he was, he was, Go seen a football standard as in uh so uh, I know he was away. I think he was on Erasmus this year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Already, you know, so he's probably only finding his feet again. Um, like he was outstanding in the last game. Um, and he's a player that can uh, and it's not the wrong saying, but he can win a game in his own feel like he's that powerful, he's that he's that much of a driving force, he has that much effect on the team around him in terms of if he's going well and he's shooting the lights out and he's He's catching ball in the middle of the pitch and driving you on. I mean, that's he's a huge force for them. Um, they all like him as well, which obviously helps. And 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 um, like he's yeah, he's I had him in the bish as well. Uh, another one like, and he's 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 a great lad. He's he's great standards. Um, and he'll be if 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 he can if he can hit the ground running. If he has a good game, they ain't losing. Yeah. And even throwing Gary, Gary Higgins and Ethan Foreign Tierney into that, like there is some, there's some talented Michael young footballers coming here. There is, yeah. And you look at the two lads, Gary and Ethan, like they have limited amount of football played in the last, especially Ethan, like he's been out for, for any time he came back, he was injured straight away and, 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 and was out again. Like, so he's a big uh, point to prove in terms of because he's a quality footballer, so good on the ball. Like he's a, he's, He's uh, so elusive, uh, makes great decisions. And Gary, then, sure. I mean, Gary with his left foot is is 
like he's he's probably the first first player in the team sheet in terms of of because he's so so technically good freeze from any distance he'll be he's a, he's a huge option um and then again so so technically good on the ball so they haven't had them players like they got they they went down last year with 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 none of those three Connell, Gary or Ethan really at any at, I think the other two weren't even playing and and Connell was 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 only a bit part player coming and going and he was I think if I'm not mistaken I watched him out in out in Spiddle with his hamstring uh, strapped up for for the relegation games like you know do you expect Michael to come out here Alan I do. I, I I expect Michaels to come out in, in a slog. Um, very much like what Norman said, though. If it depends on the day. Um, and I know you've you've said that it's stacked with nineteen players for more and more. But Michaels are also they're gritty, but also they're they're good footballers in terms of technically. So they can they can do it both ways. I think a little bit more than or more will be able to. So I'd expect Michaels by by um by four again. Yeah. You're sticking with Michaels too, Norman. Yeah, I think they'll just have enough, but it will just be it'll be tight. It'll cook there'll be a one or two point game. It won't they won't be anti major in it because the conditions are not promised great and it's an Athen Riot, isn't it? Doug and Peck. Yeah, or balanced low. So like that, that's not an awful nice pitch of all of all the pitches that are good and go with. That's that's not as nice a one for, for a windy day. Like so it, it's it's not going to play it's not going to be attractive football. That that's going to take a bit of grit and and power, and, and that's where Michael Jush might have that bit of power on. Like, but if Orr Moore can move it quick and, and get around them and and keep doing what they're doing, they'll give themselves a hell of a chance. Like, so it, it def, but it definitely I just push towards Michael's from seeing them in the flesh. Again, I said I haven't seen Orr Moore enough in the flesh to know, but but playing against Michael's, I was impressed on the two, the two times we played them. They're they're well organised, they're physically in really good condition, and they're powerful men, and they're they're used to playing Division One football. But again, I know that means nothing when you go into Championship. It means absolutely nothing, but it does. They have that experience to fall back on, and they know year one is the year to get, if you you need to get up in year one um, because it doesn't get any easier with with the the way the that's the one thing about Galway football at the moment with the over the last six seven years with the two going down and stuff they they've really 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 probably weeded football now to the the top sixteen will be in senior football next year and the the next sixteen are definitely the next sixteen best teams in Galway so they they have they have balanced it out really really well that it's. It's also competitive in both levels, like. I could be wrong as well, but I think I think Michaels have played every game in Dugan Park nearly. We might have played one one somewhere else, but I, I, yeah, I think they played. They actually played over more in Kenny Park in the yeah. group. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 going to disagree with you there. I'm going to go or more married by one. I think the momentum in the club is going to see them through this one. In the other semi final, Caltra Glenamady. Norman, for this one, it seems Caltra are one of the form teams, but this this Glen and Maddie team are, are a battle hardened team. They are Glen are one of those teams that they were banging at a glass ceiling there to get through that quarter final for the last few years, and we would have come up against them a good bit over the two years. And they were pushing and pushing and pushing, and they just couldn't make that breakthrough. Like I know we caught them in extra time, and then Cartoon caught them last year in extra time. So I'd say when it went to extra time the last day against Clifton, it must have been the the all their the flashback. But they they got through it, and, and I'd know I'd know some of the lads well over there. Like I'd know Nigel Fay well over the years from from talking to them, and like they were delighted to get through that. And and they are now. They are capable of winning this competition, but they've they've broken one ceiling. So like if they can take it a game at a time now, Glenamady, um, they could be really dangerous. Like I think sometimes Glenamady just were too hell bent on winning the intermediate after winning the junior, and sometimes you can miss that step along the way. And I think they might have just missed it against us on one year, and then they, they missed it against Cartoon last year. But I think getting over Clifton, getting into this semi final against Caltra, they they'll feel they have a really good chance. And if they can just stay in the one game at a time. I think I think they, they could be really dangerous because they have some really good footballers. They have some really, really good footballers. To me, Alan, I was looking at this game and I really feel like it's nearly Brian Duffy versus Alan Nocton in one sense because both these players have been scoring quite heavily for Calcher and Glenn Maddy. Yeah, I think Alan Nocton tore Brannock's apart in the first game, didn't he? Um, yeah. Second. Um, so... I, I just I, I like I like Glenamady. I I have a bit of experience from them in the last in the last few years with with up the road as well because we seem to have always been playing them. Um, they give us a lesson. I remember on a Paddy's day uh, out there where the, the first lesson was that they that they got the fixture out there at the, uh, that day. But um, but they 
they're I think the, 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 if Saturday is not a not a great day, I think it'll suit them. Um, I think they're they have a strong mentality. They're I won't say there's a rugby kind of a background in there as well, but there is at times, and there's a kind of a they 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 like it physical and they like it. Um, they 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 like to be uh, underdogs. Um, and they're they yeah, I think they're in a good place now. Look, Calter are, are in a really good place. Niall Coyne is is excellent coach and has them has them porn so. Um, it'll be a, it'll be, it'll be a really good game. It'll be contrasting styles, I think, and it'll be, um, I think that the, the weather could be a huge one here. Um, I just, as I say, I have a bit of a grow for Glen Maddy because I, I've seen them and I think the culture is really good at a lot of the time out there, and they're, they're, they're an honest bunch, and they're, they, at times they probably, like, I remember league two years ago, they were, they were one of the fittest teams I've seen, I've seen in the league early. At a time, but the problem was they were too fit too early, probably, and then it, it petered out for them. And you know they're they're that honest that they're they're they just I, I just hope that they that they're kind of that they're they're peaking now rather than this that they, they that they have a little bit more left in the tank. You know, who are you tipping here, Alan? I'll go with a bit of wisdom and I'll go with a draw on this one, Norman. <laughs> <laughs> Has to be a winner here, Alan, because it's a semi final. I'm afraid. We'll go yeah. with uh, we'll go Clinamati for a by a point. And Norman, how do you see this one? Yeah, I think uh, Kelter will, will give a really good account. I think I think Kelter have made huge strides. Um, I think what Gabriel and Ireland the lads have done there is massive. I watched them against Kill Connolly. I thought they were very good. Um, I thought their full forward line are dangerous. Like um, they have a guy in full forward, and he's Sean Kane. Sean Kane, and he's a handful for anyone. And I don't know how. From experience, we would have looked at Clinamedi's backs as not their, 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 as strong as their forwards and their midfield. And I think Alan Nocton takes awful marking. Um, I think it'll be, this could be, as you said, a shootout between the, the two sets of forwards. Now, there was, um, there was a young lad that played for number 20. I think it was the last day. There's some really good pace there, Um Calter the last day. Now, I didn't have a program at the game um, the last day, so I was wasn't sure about one or two who they were. And I meant to ask Gabriel after a game, but they were they're they're in good condition. They're they're they have a decent back seven. They have they're good around midfield and uh, they've good force. That they will give a really good account of themselves. But I just think I just think that um, Glenn and and Gabriel will be delighted for me to to tip and Nigel won't be. And that's, but I think John Devan going into Glenn and this year has definitely. Give them that bit of that bit of calmness that they need because they, they can get up for a game. There's no shadow of doubt they can get up for a game. And I'd be as good as I'm any man to, 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 to get motivated for the game myself. But there comes a time where you have to be able to balance it. And I think if Glenn can balance it just enough, just to just to stay in the in the in the fight and not get too over engrossed in the fight, because uh, physically they will they will give it everything. There's no shadow of doubt they will give it absolutely everything. And and so will Calter. But I think Glenn and Maddie will just just sneak it on experience because I think. The pain of the the last three years will just drive them one more step, and I think they're probably that slightly bit further down the line than Caltra right now. And I think that's why I think Michaels and Glenn and Maddie just, but just uh, overrode more and and Caltra because I think they they're just at that slightly bit further down the line in terms of they've been together that bit longer. Yeah, I agree with you too. There, I just think Glenn are gonna pip this by a point. Um, just think they're a bit more about Loudon and a bit more further down the road, and um, then. Calter and this one but uh, that's all uh, we do have time for uh, on today's show thanks to Alan and Norman for coming on thanks Paul